I was experimenting with various builds and finally stumbled upon one that seems incredibly overpowered. This build combines incredible melee potential, heavy armor, powerful weapons, mobility and versatile magic, both AoE and single target, making it incredibly fun and potent. In this video, I'll show you this build in detail, along with some battle strategies and other tips. This is Aiming for Gaming, and today we're aiming for a build sharing. For the first two levels, I recommend starting as a Fiend Warlock. It's quite formidable early on. If you plan to use heavy armor, you can safely dump dexterity. Additionally, there is no need for strength in this build, so you can dump it as well. Charisma, constitution and wisdom will be far more valuable. Intelligence isn't a priority either, but you can boost it to 17 using a headband from Act 1. Once you reach level 3, it's time to respect into Paladin. This grants you heavy and medium armor proficiencies and an expanded weapons list compared to the Warlock. Choose your Paladin subclass. I personally favor the Oathbreaker, but if it's not to your liking, I suggest the Oath of Vengeance. Here you can break an oath, for instance by freeing Saza, which can be done quickly and without harming anyone. Proceed to Paladin level 2, where you'll gain access to our primary damage dealing feature, Smites. These add an extra 2d8 damage, plus 1d8 for each level of spell slot above 1. Opt for the Great Weapon Fighting Style, which lets us reroll damage die if we roll a 1 or 2. I prefer wielding two-handed weapons for maximum damage instead of using shields. For level 1 spells, concentration spells aren't very useful because we'll often be relying on higher level concentration spells or the warlock hacks. But as there are not so many options here, I recommend spells like smites, bless or other utility options. At level 3, multiclass into warlock and choose eldritch blast and friends cantrips. Friends spell is great for dialogues and eldritch blast is like having a free gatling gun spell for ranged attacks. I typically go with the Fiend subclass for its Fireball and Wall of Fire spells, along with the bonus health on kills, which you'll achieve frequently. At this point, I usually pick Burning Hands and Hex, and at level 4 I take Armor of Agathis as my secondary spell. As for Eldritch invocations, my top picks are Agonizing Blast and Devil's Sight. Agonizing Blast adds your Charisma bonus to each Eldritch Blast attack and will be firing 3 of them in the endgame. Devil's Sight allows you to see in darkness, including the darkness spell, which makes this build incredibly powerful. Moving on to level 5, we choose Scorching Ray, available from the Fiend subclass, a versatile multi-target ranged spell. Depending on your Paladin multiclass preference, select Misty Step for Oathbreaker or Darkness for Vengeance Paladin. This will be our next spell to pick. Your Packed Boon is undoubtedly Packed of the Blade, allowing you to summon a packed weapon or bind an existing one gaining full proficiency with it and changing its ability modifier from strength to charisma. Next is level 6 in total and level 4 as a warlock. Select a defensive cantrip such as Blade Ward and choose the spell mentioned earlier based on your paladin subclass. In my case, with Oathbreaker, I go with Misty Step. Here you'll get your first feat and you can opt for an additional 2 points in charisma. However, I prefer Great Weapon Master, granting an additional melee attack as a bonus action after a critical hit or enemy kill. As a bonus, it provides a toggleable passive ability that adds plus 10 flat damage at the cost of minus 5 attack roll penalty, which won't significantly impact our playstyle. At level 7, you receive several significant upgrades. Most notably, you gain an extra attack for your packed weapon, which triggers for free with each action. Level 3 spells unlock, with Fireball being a standout choice. Next, take the Eldritch Invocation Repelling Blast, which lets you push enemies with each shot. Combine this with the 3 shots you'll have at higher levels, and it becomes quite overpowered for a cantrip. You can also replace one of your spells with Hunger of Hadar, one of the best level 3 spells in the game. It creates a massive area of darkness, damaging anyone at the start and end of their turn, while making it difficult to rain. However, keep in mind that Devil's Sight doesn't work in this area and you'll also take damage from the spell, so exercise caution. Continuing to level up, invest one more level into Paladin, choose spells to your liking, perhaps more smites. At level 9 you acquire your second and final feat, where I recommend investing in ability improvements to raise your charisma to 19. You can obtain the last point from various quests and items and 20 charisma is quite advantageous. At level 10 you gain level 2 spell slots and another extra attack, this time from Paladin. This extra attack stacks with the one from Warlock, allowing you to make a total of 3 attacks in succession. 
This is a significant advantage, as even fighters don't achieve this until level 11. By the way, hitting the like button on this video might give you an advantage as well, as it inspires me to create even more videos for you. Furthermore, all these attacks rely on your charisma, eliminating the need of strength. Select level 2 spells you find appealing, but remember that it's often more efficient to use your spell slots on what you gain from the Warlock class. Now it's decision time. You have two options for your final two levels. You can invest them in Paladin, granting you two auras. Aura of Protection, which adds your Charisma bonus to saving throws for you and allies within 3 meters. And Aura of Hate, which adds a flat Charisma bonus to each attack for you and nearby friends and undead, including enemies, but not your companions. This is a solid choice for buffs, but I recommend an alternative route. Instead, allocate those two levels into Warlock. At level 11, choose what you prefer. Personally, I use Counter Spell. You also gain Dark One's own luck, which adds a 1d10 to an ability check once per short rest. At level 12, you unlock level 4 spells. You can choose two spells, one from the level itself, I recommend Blight, which is potent against plants, and another one, Wall of Fire, which replaces our previous choice, Burning Hands. Additionally, you gain an extra Eldritch Invocation. I recommend the Book of Ancient Secrets, which adds three more spells per long rest, castable without expending spell slots. Two of them may be inferior to Eldritch Blast with three strikes at this point, but Silence Fear can be useful as it silences everyone, including you, while your smites and extra attacks remain available. That completes the setup. Now let's delve into the spells, combos and gameplay. As a level 5 Paladin and level 7 Warlock, you have access to the channel of charge, which can be used to debuff enemies, control undead, or inflict an area of effect fear without the need of concentration. This charge replenishes after each short rest. You also possess Eldritch Blast as a ranged cantrip, delivering 3 shots with repelling and charisma bonuses. Utilize a combination of spells using both Warlock and Paladin spell slots based on the situation. Remember that Warlock spell slots refresh on a short rest? Your primary attack benefits from numerous bonuses and relies on charisma, eliminating the need for strength. Each action point grants you three attacks and the potential for a bonus attack on a critical hit or enemy kill. Each of these attacks can apply Divine Smite, which can consume regular spell slots or level 4 Warlock spell slots. These slots are easily replenished and add 5d8 damage, doubling on a critical hit. With 3 attacks per action point, you can land from 6 to 7 attacks per turn with a bonus action if you're hastened. it. When facing a single target, apply Hex using a level 1 spell slot. It doesn't scale with a spell slot level, but it adds extra damage to all 6 attacks. Even without smites, the Everburn Blade grants you up to 36 damage per swing with Hex applied, totaling more than 200 damage per turn. For controlling the battlefield or dealing AoE damage, consider using a level 4 Fireball, Hunger of Hadar or Wall of Fire, all available after a short rest. During battle, make use of Misty Step from Warlock by using a level 2 spell slot from Paladin. If you're dealing with multiple enemies instead of Hex, create a Darkness Zone. With the Devil's Sight you can remain inside, gaining an advantage against enemies within, while remaining safe from ranged attacks, all while casting spells with no disadvantage. So, cast a darkness spell to obscure your enemies, then step inside. Blinded enemies will give you an advantage, allowing you to unleash a flurry of smite attacks. Even if you miss, you won't expend spell slots, including the warlock ones. So, the 70 damage hit will eventually find its victim. And if you see enemies coupled together, throw a fireball or wall of fire instead. To summarize, this build combines the best spells and abilities from both classes at the cost of high level spells and one feat. However, this investment is modest compared to the incredible power and versatility you gain in return, making it highly recommended choice. I hope with this guide you have achieved what you were aiming for today. For more guides, simply visit my channel and consider subscribing, it's that easy. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.